All right, in this video, I'm going to talk about what happens when a weak acid, in this case we have HN3, is reacted with a certain amount of strong base. This is a point along the titration curve, and we'll determine if we're at the equivalence point, before the equivalence point, or after the equivalence point along the titration curve. So the first thing to note is that when you have a weak acid and you're reacting it with a strong base, that is going to be a reaction, not an equilibrium. Reactions require you to do an IC final table. That's talking about the reaction stoichiometry, not an ICE table. That's only when you're at equilibrium. So we're going to have an IC final table, and an IC final table relies on the number of moles of both of our reactants. So let's start to determine the number of moles of our weak acid HN3. So this is straight stoichiometry. We have 20 milliliters of the HN3 solution. And there's 1,000 milliliters in a liter. And the molarity tells us that for every one liter of the solution, we will have 0 0.2 moles of HN3. So our moles of HN3, 0 0.004. Let's do the same thing with our sodium hydroxide. We have 17.5 milliliters. There is 1,000 milliliters in a liter. And every liter has 0 0.1 moles in it because the molarity of that is 0 0.1. So our number of moles of sodium hydroxide, 0 0.00175. So we're not at the equivalence point. The equivalence point is when moles of the acid are equal to moles of the base. So we're not at the equivalence point. We are before the equivalence point because we have less sodium hydroxide than acid. So let us set up the IC final table to determine our concentrations. So the reaction that occurs, weak acid, HN3, reacts with sodium hydroxide. And I'm simplifying things here. I know that sodium is a cation that does not affect the pH. So I'm just sort of ignoring it. It's like a spectator ion. It does not participate in the reaction. So we have HN3 reacts with sodium hydroxide. Reaction arrow, not equilibrium. And the products of this reaction, bases, pull protons off of acids. Acids donate their protons to bases. So after the hydroxide pulls off the proton, we're left with water. And after weak acid loses its proton, we're left with conjugate base and three minus. Our IC final table now, our initial number of moles of HN3 is 0.004. Our initial number of moles of sodium hydroxide, of a hydroxide ion, 0 0.00175. We don't really care what's happening with water. Uh, it's not going to affect their pH. And we have zero number of moles of our N3 minus. Now the change in an IC final table is really just talking about which one of these reactants is the limiting reactant. Which one of them do we have less of? We have less hydroxide. So during the course of the reaction, all of the hydroxide is going to be consumed by the HNO3. I'm sorry, by the HN3. So we're going to subtract the number of moles of each, 0 0.00175. And over here, we're going to gain 0 0.00175. So after the reaction is done with, we have 0 0.04. 0 0.004 minus 0 0.00175, we're left with 0.00225 moles of HN3. We have no moles of hydroxide. We have 0 0.00175 moles of N3 minus. Let's talk about this in terms of the final molarity, because this here is our final number of moles. Let's talk about it in terms of its final molarity. The total number of uh, milliliters of solution, we have 20, point, 20 milliliters plus 17.5 milliliters. 
So our total number of milliliters is 37.5. That means that we have 0 0.0375 liters of the solution. So to get our final molarities, we're going to divide by our total number of liters of solution. Moles over liters is molarity. So that divided by 0 0.0375 over here gives us a final molarity of HN3 of 0 0.06 molar and over here 0 0.0467 molar. So let's look and see what we have. We're ultimately trying to figure out the pH. So let's see what we have here. We have HN3, a concentration of that, and a concentration of N3 minus. This is a buffer. The reason that we know that it's a buffer is because buffers are made when you have an acid and its conjugate base mixed together in the solution. This is a buffer. We're going to simplify any of our buffer calculations by using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation in which the pH is equal to the pKa of the acid component plus the log of the base component, in this case N3- minus is our base component, divided by the concentration of our acid component, HN3. So pKa is the negative log of the Ka. So for this, our pKa is equal to the negative log of the Ka, which I gave to you in the problem, 1.9 times 10 to the minus 5. So our pKa is 4.72. So we're ready to put things in. pH equals 4.72 plus the log of base component, 0 0.0467. divided by the concentration of our acid component, 0 0.06. So 4.72 plus the log of that gives us a pH of 4.61. And that should make sense. We have more acid than we do the base. We are before the equivalence point. So pH of 4.61 makes sense.